Hey, coaches, welcome to Championship Culture. Got a special guest today, a good buddy of mine, George Colthorpe. He is, uh, most of you guys who know me know George. Uh, he runs the 92 Mesh Group channel. And, uh, and George has actually come to work with us this year. He's come as our offensive coordinator, assistant head coach. And I, I want to brag on him real quick. You know, uh, he's, he coaches our O-line and has really elevated them to the next level as far as uh, both in the run game and in the pass game. Uh, he's an unfair advantage up in the box. Uh, it should really, they should pass a rule against that. And then the biggest one and the one I didn't expect, be honest, but I should have because, you know, it's just been so long since I had a good veteran uh, coach with me. I've been, uh, you know, I've been kind of making a living with the young guys. I like the young guys because you can mold them and teach them how you want them to do it. So it's been so long since I had a good veteran coach with me, but George has brought, uh, you know, just a, a multitude of great ideas in, in the in the area of program and in culture. And that's why I asked him to come on and do this one with me because he came up and, and uh, I'm going to let him explain why, but he came up with uh, official visits for the for the middle school program. And, uh, you know, we, we have a we have a very limited amount of home games this year, but He's already done one of these, and it was probably the best I've ever seen it done. He brought in four, uh, four of the best middle school players from our middle school, and uh, and treated it like a, a college visit. So I'm going to let George uh, uh, explain it to you. But man, I appreciate you doing this, and I appreciate you uh, coming to Hopton and uh, and making us a lot dang better, buddy. So uh, uh, take over. You know, I uh, I was fortunate a long time ago, about actually 10 years ago, Joe, I, I saw the picture the other day, but you know, 10 years ago, you, you came to me when I was at Red Springs and really helped me elevate that program to the next level. So, you know, when I had the opportunity to come do the same thing with you, man, it was just really, really was important. And, and, and you've built something really special there. I mean, we talk about this all the time, but you know, we may not have the most athletic kids. We may not have the biggest kids, the fastest kids, but I promise you we have the best kids in North Carolina when it comes to coaching the team. These kids get after it every day. They're just yes, sir, no, sir. They're good to each other. They're good to us. They're good in the school building. And it's just it's just a wonderful place to come to work, man. And so I, I really appreciate that. But um, as far as the, um, the official visit idea, um, you know, I, I've been known over my career to kind of be a guy that can get kids into schools. You know, I've always had guys go to college and, and do different things. And I've always been really interested, um, even as a young coach in the recruiting process. Uh, my mentor put me kind of in charge of that stuff at a very young age, um, having come from the college arena to the high school ball and being that far removed, you know, just how that whole process works. So, um, when we were at Red Springs, we were in a very similar situation that we are here at, at, at Hopton is we had a, uh, a middle school that was basically on campus, you know, it's really in the backyard and, you know, and, and we had the same situation at Hopton. So um, the county that I was in, though, kind of had this open enrollment thing where kids could go to other schools and, and it, it wasn't uncommon for the rumor mill to say this kid is going to go here, this kid is going to go there. And, and so I wanted to come up with an idea on how to, uh, you know, not only sell our program, but, but get our kids to be excited about being, you know, in, in this case, being Wildcats. And, 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 and so um, when you and I were talking in the preseason and I, and I brought this up to you and you, you just kind of did like this, and I was like, no, look, we've done this before. And, and, and so, you know, it was really neat that, that you gave, gave me the opportunity to throw this in. And, and those kids, I, I swear, like, after that game that night, when they were coming out of the field house after you got done meeting with their parents, they were just, you know, they were all in. And, and, and what, what people don't know, and I don't even know if you know, but the following Thursday at the JV game, those same kids were there and they were out high-fiving our guys and like, yo, they had already met this dude. And, you know, some of them knew him because they were younger, but they were all in on, they, they wanted to be a part of everything we were doing. And so it's like, we've already reached those four and I can't wait till um, next week when we can bring in four more and, uh, and, and, and do it that way. So let me go ahead and share the screen and, I, and I'll share with the, with, the, with the coaches kind of what we do. Um, you know, in the thing, I put a little PowerPoint together, but um, can you see that? Um, 
but we call it we call it the future wildcat official uh visit experience and 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 really it is exactly what it sounds like um you know the purpose of this is to is to really immerse and, and immerse is, a, is is probably the best word because we don't want them just to show up like middle school night every high school has a middle school night they throw their jerseys on they come out there before the game and you know they run around i mean matter of fact the school we played last week they had some kind of middle school or youth night where all those kids were running around on the sidelines having a great time but there really wasn't no immersion they were just kind of there and they got in the game free but so we really want to immerse our middle schoolers in that eighth grade experience and i mean in our in our game day experience so the idea is to you know we want them to be excited about being a program and we want to create that conversation with them right now about what it means to be a wildcat and um and there's no better way um you know, those of us who, you know, Joe, you, you're doing, you're, you've done your master's in administration. I've done my, my EDS and all that stuff. And, and, you know, one of the big, big, big things in education now is like these, these language immersion programs. You take a kid, you throw them in an immersion program and they learn because they're around it. You know, you don't really talk to them about it. They just come. And so that's kind of the idea. Um, and then also it gives you an early end with the parents because we, we tried to involve the parents in this situation too. So that's kind of our purpose, but um, you know, the, the idea is, is, you know, we, we set, we set the tone really early. Um, we're fortunate that, the, that our middle school head coach is, is a, uh, is a former staff member with us and he works with us on game days still. And he's a great young coach. And I'm really excited about what he's going to become in the future. Um, but he invited us to come over to the parent meeting and, and, and gave you the opportunity to, you know, to talk about our core values and, and, and the things that we think are important um, with, with Hopton, with those parents and, and kind of expose them to you early on. And the great thing about that is we have some, some linear progress with that because our same core principles are the same core principles that the middle school coach talks about. You know, today, Wednesday is work ethic. Well, the middle school Wednesday is worth ethic, ethic too. So, so that's a good thing. So if you ever get in a situation where, you know, there's more to just my middle school runs the same offense as we do. They run the same defenses that we do. We're, we're taking this to the next level where our middle school is, we want that to be an extension of our program, much like our JV team would be. Um, and, you know, we, unfortunately for us, I mean, fortunately for us, we got quarantined for a week and you and I were able to go over there with some of the other coaches and help, you know, start the middle school season, which was really cool. But so, you know, going over there during that process, meet with those parents, you know, get a chance to give your core values out to your parents, um, middle school parents. And then you then we want to identify those prospects, those kids who um, who we know are going to be players. And, and, and let me say this. This isn't just for the top dogs. All right, you know, there can, there can only be one pack leader, but, you know, the, one of the reasons why we had a kid, matter of fact, you know, we, I mentioned this earlier, you know, Wednesday's work ethic, but one of our seniors stood up today in front of the entire team and he was talking about work ethic and what did he say? He said, he said, look, man, I'm not the most talented guy on our team by far, but I've worked my butt off for four years to be a starter and that kid is a big time contributor for us, <laughs> you know, and, and, and so, you know, we're not just going to get the best tailback, the best, you know, we didn't even bring the quarterback this time. You know, and we have a pretty good middle school quarterback, but he didn't he didn't get invited to the first home game. We went with, uh, I think, two offensive linemen, a, a, a running back and, and a defensive player. And so we brought the uh, not a running back, but a wide receiver and, and a defensive player. We brought those four guys in. And, and I think it's really important that if you're going to do this immersion concept that you limit it to four or five players, because now as, as organized as I thought we were, it still was hard to keep our hands on those kids and make them feel a part of it and still do all the things that we had to do, you know, and, you know, we're not fortunate and, and I don't know if it's misfortune, but we're not fortunate to have one of those 12 coach staffs that some of these guys have. I mean, we have what five, there's five of us, including you. So, I mean, there's two of us on offense, three on defense. And then, you know, we got, and then we got uh, the middle school coach. So that's six. And so, you know, but we all kind of have game day things. So, so, um, you know, you want to identify those those eight to 12 players, especially, you know, 16 if you have. And look, if you've got five home games, bring 20 players. Don't ever bring the same two guys. You know, I, I don't I never want to bring the same two guys. If those if other kids want to come, that's fine. But they don't get to do the immersion. Once they do the immersion, they're, they're done because I think they're all in after that. So, you know, plan ahead. When's your big, you know, your big game? You know, for us, you know, that's when we play the blue team or or this coming up week, you know, when we play, you know, the number one rated team in our conference, you know, that's when we want to bring the quarterback, 
you know, when we have those big games, you know, you don't want to bring it, bring them just because you think you're going to win. You want to bring these kids so they get a real idea of what it's like to compete in, in, in these big games. And so what we do is we create an invitation letter. I mean, we sent letters over there to them. We, we created game tickets. And, um, you know, what I can do is I'll, I'll download a, a, a sample of that and we can put it in the description of the video if any of those guys want to download the letter and see kind of what we write. I mean, it's nothing, nothing like game change or anything like that. But we took letters, we created, we gave each player two tickets for their parents or friend and, and said, here. And then we, uh, we delivered them. I delivered them, hand delivered them to the middle school head coach. And he took them over there, uh, you know, two days before the game, gave them to the players. And, and that's kind of how that started. So um, once all that happens, and then obviously in the letter, you know, it tells the parents when, when to show up. You know, we don't want the parents to be there at 3.30. We want the parents to show up at what, you know, what I think we said 6.30 or something like that, you know, just to give a chance. But, you know, the ideal pregame experience, you know, there were some things that we had to move around because there were some practices and stuff like that. So it's only going to get better. Um, you know, but obviously we want them to be there for walkthrough. So if we walk through at three o'clock, they get out of school at the same time we do. So we want them on the field at 310 with us. And, and, and they walk through with their position, you know, and, and, you know, we have, you know, whether it's me or one of the other coaches who we designate that week to be the experienced coordinator, the one to make sure all that stuff goes, goes down. Um, but they go through walkthrough with their with their uh, position coach. They do all you know how we line up for special teams, and, and they kind of see that idea and and how we want to be locked in. We don't want to be goofing around, you know, uh, you know how we do things, and I think that's really important. We take them to their their pregame meal, and and we pair them with a senior in their position or an upperclassman in their position. So, if you like, for us, we don't have a senior running back, so the next time we bring a running back, they'll go with our junior running back during pregame, and they'll sit with him and and go through that whole process. Um, and then we bring them uh, to, our, to our position meetings, you know, whether it's by team or whether it's by, uh, you know, groups. Some teams meet, um, you know, defense meets, offense meets. Some people meet linebackers, O-line, you know, however you want to do it. So, um, you know, for us, we invite them to the team meeting. They get to come in and see the, you know, the, the pregame spiel. I mean, you're, you're one of those you love to do. Um, video clips and, and things like that, you know, to, to kind of set the tone for the day. Um, so you want to have them in there. Um, and then we give them a, a, a gold jersey. Now, I will tell you, our middle school coach won up us on this one because we had jerseys and stuff ready for them. But they came over in their hopped-in game jerseys, their hopped-in middle school game jerseys, which I thought was really cool um, because those jerseys are really nice looking. So they actually came over with their jerseys. So that kind of that kind of changed up a little bit. Um, so after the position meetings, our principal actually came over and met with the kids and he knew a couple of them anyway, because he's really he's in from the community, but he went over and took pictures with him and talked to him for a little bit and kind of gave him a little love and, and, and let them know that athletics was important to him and, and you know, those kind of things and, you know, gave him the, hey, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do in the school building and staying out of trouble speech, which was really good. Um, and then, you know, they come on the field when we go when we go to pregame and, and our, our pregame is a little different than most people's. Uh, you know, we come out as a team. We don't come out in in, uh, you know, kickers and all those other stuff. You know, we come out and, and I really like and I think if I ever take another job, we're probably going to do what we do here. I like that. You know, it's just one long thing. And, you know, maybe that's another video we can do sometime. Just talk about our pregame because I think it's really unique, but it's really, really a good a good situation. Um, but they go on the field with their position groups, just like you would if you've ever been on a college official visit. Um, they get to come back in, in, inside and, 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 and listen to us. Uh, one of the unique things we do when we circle the wagons um, and, and hear the pregame speech and, and get right. And then about that time, um, we ask the parents to get there about 15 to 20 minutes before game time. And we try to hook them up with the athletic director or booster club president. And, and say, you know, hey, and, and good thing for us, and, th and that was more for what we had to do at Red Springs, um, but, you know, at Hopton, our community is so small and tight-knit that most of these parents already know each other, so it's a good thing, but we want them to see kind of what's expected, like, you know, hey, these young, the JV parents will work the varsity games, the varsity parents will work the JV games, so on and so forth. Um, at that point, um, you know, we pass the recruits off to the parents, and, and then hopefully we go get a win. <laughs> and, and then after that, um, you know, they're invited down on the field when we do the post game talk. Um, and then each one of them got a chance to meet with you and you and their, their parents met with you for, you know, a couple of minutes and you chit chatted with them and talk and we took pictures and then, you know, we sent them a, 
a little thing. And, and, and matter of fact, I'm still in the process of printing out the pictures to send the, the little pictures that we took during your experience. So that's kind of the idea, you know, it's, it's an immersion thing. It's very, very much, uh, uh, you know, a college model, um, but I, I really like it. And I think, I think it's something that's going to help us as we build our program. I, I was absolutely amazed by it. I thought, number one, you you kick tail at it. Like like you said, there's five of us. We don't have a huge staff where we can put one guy on it. So you were kind of doing double duty. But I, I thought uh, bringing them in and getting the pictures. They got a picture with me. They got a picture with the uh, with the principal. Uh, getting to talk to the parents and and I could see. You know, you said it, it, it became it, it got started in a competitive environment where if you're not doing stuff like that, another high school might be stealing your your best middle school players. For us, it's more of a winning hearts and minds kind of thing and and getting them excited about what's next. Uh, and, and, and we are lucky we got the, the middle school coach. Uh, he's with us on game day. I mean, he's all in, like you said, he does the culture stuff exactly like we do it. And, uh, but I, I just thought, you know, from, from the first time you started explaining it to me to actually seeing you carry it out, I just thought it was next level. Uh, I, I'd never done anything like it before. And, uh, and I just think it's a, a tool in the toolbox to really build uh, an elite program. And, uh, and again, I thank you for bringing that, uh, that that's a, a coach C, uh, special and, uh, and it's going to make us a lot dang better. And I appreciate you doing it. And I appreciate you being on here and sharing it. You know, we always say, this is such a, uh, this is such a small niche for guys who actually watch this, uh, yeah. this, uh, this podcast, uh, but it, this is a dang sure one to steal, especially if you're in that, that environment where, uh, people are having a fight for the middle school kids. This is a way to get a leg up on the competition. Well, and, and I think I think the other thing, Joe, that that's important is <clears throat> I don't know how many of the guys who are listening to the podcast really know where you started day one with that Hopton. Um, as far as you know, Hopton had had went from being a legendary program in the state of North Carolina to falling on really, really hard times. I mean, to where it was almost one of the worst programs in North Carolina because of a lot of different reasons, economic reasons and all of those stuff. But in these four years that you've been here doing the things that you've already done culture-wise, you, you've built hopped into a point where we're actually legitimately able to talk about being conference champions and people don't laugh. And, and so this is something that reinforces the trajectory that we're trying to keep this program on because we're showing these middle school kids this isn't a fluke this is something that we want to do year in and year out and um i i think this was one of the reasons why when we were talking about things to do that i wanted that i brought this up to you because i thought to myself this is another way to immerse these kids into what we're doing because we do have a really good senior class but we have a good junior class too and we don't want to get in a situation to where we miss a class because we lost some kids here and there. We want these guys to be ready. And so, you know, maybe, maybe we're not having to do as much culture building when they first come over, we can spend more time in the weight room and the skill development building, because this has already been ingrained in them um, at a younger age. And they know from these types of experiences, you know, what to expect when, you know, they come through the woods and, and come over to our practice field. Absolutely. And and that they, they don't get to see that, but they literally have to come through the woods to come from the middle There's school. There's a bridge. I didn't even know it was on the other side. <laughs> yeah, they come through the woods to come from the middle school to the high school. But man, definitely, uh, I, I think it's a program changer. And uh, even, you know, whether you're like us and you're a little rule school and you're just trying to win hearts and minds, or if you're, you know, in one of those situations where you got to fight for the middle school kids, this is a way to give you a competitive advantage and to, and to get your hands on those kids and start building a relationship. And uh, George and I appreciate you bringing it to me and I appreciate you coming on here and sharing it with everybody. Absolutely, man. Anytime. Thanks, I like bro. I can say no. <laughs> Thanks, man.